Amen. You, you're telling me when you don't seek the face of the Lord, you're not hearing from the Lord. So why are you speaking into my life? Well, yeah. Yeah. that's good. You need to hear from God to speak to me. Otherwise, be quiet. Hush, don't say a word. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Continually in prayer. Isaiah 61, which Brother LeBron read earlier, Rise, shine, for thy light has come, mm -hmm. and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Yes, in Hebrews 1, yes. 1 through 13. And I'm just going to extract a couple of verses there. I'm not going to read the entire verse, uh, three verses. I'm going to read verse 2 and 3. Have in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the power of the word of, the, of his power. And when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Amen. So glory, to back up what Pastor Jewish has already said, and stand in agreement with everything the woman has said, a God is set, amen. Let's give her a round of applause, amen, because the word that she gave us is simply a testament, amen. Amen. Just want to make sure I stay on time, too, amen. Amen. So, glory, to give you a definition, is dignity, yes, yes, yes. reputation, God's reputation, yes. his greatness, his nobility, his power, yes. his magnificence, his honor, his indisputable mm. honor. He cannot be disputed. He's right about it. He's right about it. He's without equal. No one right. can compare to God. Even when Lucifer thought well, he was going to overthrow God, God showed him who he really was. Well, okay, I'm definitely all powerful. Yeah. You're a created being. Right. Therefore, you're subject to my power, right, right. my strength, right. and my authority. And since you will obey me, guess what? Right. I'm kicking you out, and everything that follows you got to go. Yeah. Hallelujah, yeah. Jesus. It's got to go. It can't stand. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So without equal, and he, is, he has no rivals, and no one can topple him, which we already said about that. His face reveals all of who he is. And that's why we still seek him right. today. Yes. Amen. 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 So that Amen. we can learn all that we want to need to know about him. Amen. Now, the character of an individual mm. is just as important right. as the anointing that is on that person's life. As a matter of fact, without character, there is no anointing. <laughs> We're seeing too many of that today in the church world, where we have too many leaders who lack character My and think that they can function in ministry but the power of the anointing and the power of what they express and display through the word of God is connected to their character yes. if you don't have good character then you can't stand in a holy place and declare holy things because holy things are only declared by those who have good character Jesus Christ, the Bible says, he was without sin. So when he spoke and when he talked, his character caused things to manifest. He could walk up to somebody who had blinded eyes and open up their eyes because he had good character. He had good quality. And because of that, God honored him and backed up everything that he said and did because he knew that his son would constantly honor him because of his character. And he came to develop the 12 disciples into having good character. Yeah. And we know that there were some red uh, people among St. Peter, to name of, of, of just one, yeah. and how Peter was just off and left Peter most of the time, even to a point that Peter said to Jesus, okay, I'm not going to leave you, Father. I'm not going to leave you. I'll even die with you. But what did Peter end up doing? Cursing and denying him. Amen. So that all has to do with character. So since we're talking about character, let me give you a definition of character. Okay, it's the aggregate or combine of the features and traits that form the individual nature of a person. It's moral or ethical quality, a man of fine, honorable quality, good reputation, very good reputation. What does God have to say? about character. 
It's a good question. <laughs> Glad you asked. <laughs> okay? So let's explore. Proverbs 10 and 19 says this. Whoever walks in integrity from the English Standard Version and uprightness from the King James Version means to walk securely, yeah. but he who makes his ways crooked will be found out. So we're going to talk about three words in this particular verse. Walk, integrity, and uprightness. So walk is a very good word. It comes from a word in the Hebrews, halak, H-A-L-A-K. So halak means to behave. Converse, grow, run. It speaks to how we conduct ourselves in this life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay? So when we talk about walk, we're talking about how are you walking? Okay? How are you conducting yourself? Right, how are you behaving yourself? Amen. Are you being honest? Are you being above board? Are you nasty? Are you cantankerous? Are you walking? And it's amazing that you have people that walk in the kingdom who are nasty, cantankerous, honorary, right. despicable, yeah. and they don't see any problems with who they are. The and that in itself is a problem. Amen. Amen. Okay? Whoever believes, whoever, excuse me, whoever behaves with integrity grows secure. But he who makes his ways crooked, well, listen. Everyone will know all about your business. Because <laughs> God will pull the covers off yes, he and he will expose. Oh, yes, he will. Yes, he will. That's what that verse means in Proverbs. Yes. Integrity is a universal concern. Yes. In Baltimore right now, we're dealing with a mayor who's embroiled because of a book deal of a board that she sat on who authorized the sales of a book where she's made over $700,000 from that particular uh, entity, mm. along with another entity, she made over 500 grand, wow. and then another entity, over 300 grand. Now one, if you're sitting on the board that drives the decision, why would you make the decision to authorize the sale of your own book? Integrity issue. Major integrity issue. We're in a country where we're dealing with a president who has major integrity issues. A billionaire status doesn't mean that you're exempt from the law. A presidential status doesn't mean that you're above the law because regardless of how many lawyers you may have in your court, at the end of the day, God is still going to expose and you to the law and the truth will be revealed. Integrity is a major thing. Yes. It is true that integrity alone won't make us a good leader, but without integrity, we will never be a leader at all. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> so Proverbs, the 10th chapter, integrity, is adherence to moral and ethical principles, yes. especially biblical principles, yes. the word of God, adherence to the will, mind, and listen to this, the voice of God. What is God right. telling you Amen. that you're not obeying? Amen. Amen. What is God saying to you that you are obeying and walking in? Are we listening to the word of the Lord when it comes to everything that the Lord has to say? Now the next word, the uprightly, comes from a Hebrew word. I forgot I was supposed to be writing a little more here. From a Hebrew word, tom, tom. It means completeness. It also means prosperity. Now, many of us will hear the word prosperity. The first thing we go to is financial right. prosperity. Uh -huh. okay. Uh -huh. okay, let's take that off the table for a moment. Yes, God is willing that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prosper. But he's more concerned about our souls prospering first. That's why the word says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So when we talk about prosperity in this sense, we're talking about being successful in our character, flourishing in our character, thriving in our positive character, and being accomplished in our character. So God really wants us to become perfect or perfection or perfectionist. 
And yes, we know that we're not perfect yet. We're moving on to become perfect. Yeah. Amen. And that's why we're here. Because we crave, we desire, we want to be perfect. We want to walk in the mind and the will of yeah. God continuously yeah. and completely. Yeah. So when we look at Matthews 5, 48, it says, Be therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Matthews 5, 48. Let me read that again. Be therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Mm -hmm. Now that word perfect in Hebrew comes from another word. I know we don't talk it. <clears throat> but at least we can educate ourselves. That's right. That's right. Amen. And I've got my eye there. So please forgive me. Tell you, thank you. It means perfect in this sense, in this particular scripture. It means be complete in labor, <clears throat> growth, and I love this one, in our mental capacity. Yes. Since the beginning of the year, and Pastor Val, Pastor Gary can tell you, we've been looking at Matthews, the sixth chapter, the 13th verse. I'm going to give it to you from the message Bible, which I really love. Deliver mm -hmm. us from ourselves yeah. and the devil. Yeah. You're in charge, God. Yeah. We've been dealing with the, the psyche, the mental yeah. issues of the mind, yeah. dealing with the imagination. Yeah. Things that historically we don't want to deal with. Mm -hmm. Things that we don't want to be yeah. set free from. Okay. And in the mind of every individual, there's an idol that we set up, that we worship instead of God. It could be our own image. It could be anger. It could be depression. It could be multiple things that lies in that imagination that we don't want to give up on. We want to protect it instead of being protectors of the glory. We want to be protectors of our issues. And in order to be an anointed carrier of the glory, the very first thing that we must do is realize what our issues are, take ownership of it, deal with it, be honest, regardless of how painful it may be, right. and ask God to deliver us yes. from ourselves yes. and deliver us from the power of the devil so that we will be set free to walk yes. as the characters that God would have us to be. Amen. Yes. So that we're perfect also means that we have more good moral character. Yes. But having attained to its end, completely perfect, having no flaws mm -hmm. and apprehending divine things. Right. I want to say that apprehending the things of God, understanding the things of God, and walking in those things of God. Philippians 3 and 14 says, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Yes. Which comes from another word, and I'll write that down. Forgive me. See you moment. Tell us. Which means consummated goals. Or consummated goal. And the importance of this, because even in uh, uh, John, the 19th chapter, the 31st, which says, when Jesus therefore reached the venom, received the venom, excuse me, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Now, for most people that would read that verse, they will already conclude by the word finish that it's done. It's over with. Nothing else needs to be done. But we all know by Jesus Christ himself that wasn't the end. Because we know on the third day, as the Bible says, that he arose again from the dead with all power and with yes. all might in his hand. Yes. Amen. Amen. And he made an open display of the devil because I believe when he came, went down into the lower parts of the earth, right. into hell, even Lucifer didn't even know he was coming. Right. <laughs> he was surprised because he thought it was finished. Finality. It was done. We're rid of him. There's nothing else to happen. But when he came and showed up in all of his glory, Yes. came through and breached the darkness of hell, and he snatched the keys of death, held the grave, he proved to them it wasn't over. Mm -hmm. 
Right. It was just the dead. Just and character brings us to the point of our beginning, our genesis. Mm -hmm. So in this particular verse, when he said, when we reach perfection, the power of the anointing reaches a clearly defined intensity that's beyond anything that we could ever imagine. Lord. Just imagine that. When we check our character, when we check our mentality, uh -huh. when we deal with where we are and we allow God to develop good character in us, the anointing that you used to operate and function under, you won't know anymore. Why? Because the intensity will be that much greater. You'll be able to walk into a room and the whole room shifts because you're there. Yeah. All right. Because of your presence. Yeah. Amen. The whole Amen. room, somebody didn't get it. Let me say it again. Yeah. You can walk in and the whole room shifts because of the anointing that's on the inside of you. That when they're having conversations that mean absolutely nothing about the kingdom, they come to a screeching halt. Because they feel and sense a power in you that defines what should be transpired in this place. That's why we should never go to a ministry, go to a church, and never expect for the glory of the Lord to show yeah. up. Well, that's good. Uh, I was, I was that's preaching that. at a ministry several years ago. Pastor Gary was with me. And I was preaching, getting ready to preach, and I was halfway through my message. And I felt the tenseness of the atmosphere. I felt hell in the atmosphere. Oh I felt anger. I felt yeah. bitterness. I felt everything coming up off the people of God. And he'll tell you, I stopped right in my tracks. And I said, everybody in this place, stand up and begin to worship God. Because yeah. I refuse to preach or try to deliver the word of God when I'm trying to fight through the atmosphere yeah. because you fail to deal with your issues. Yeah. You have yeah. an apostle in the house, and because I am an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, a title that I don't take lightly, I have control over this atmosphere. Yeah. And everything that's under the sound of my voice yeah. is going to come in control of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. How many people that we have that walk in the glory of the Lord will demand that type of respect to the Lord? Right, right. right. I don't care who they are. I don't care who their title, their title is. I don't care who they position yes, themselves to be. When God said, I'm going to be in this atmosphere, yes. no demon in hell yes. is going to block it. Amen. It's all about character. Yes, God. Yes, God. It's yes. all about calling people into Check. Yes. Right. Amen. So tell me what means comes again. What does it mean? It means to fill up. It means to be perfected in your purpose. As a matter of fact, consummate really means to bring to a state of perfection. We know that when a husband and a wife get married, Amen. on that night, Amen. they come together mm -hmm. and glory. Yeah. Fireworks go off. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Some of y'all got that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. So what does that mean? See, they, that means that they're being made perfect as one. The Bible says the two flesh shall become one. Amen. See, let me help you out right now. If you have any type of marital issues, you need to consummate. All right. I'm not talking about having in intimate relationship. Right. I'm talking about consummate, make perfect your relationship. Yes. Turn down everything that stands in the way that prevents it from becoming the example that God intended for it to be in the earth. Yes. Many couples, listen, rush to divorce without working through their issues. Yes. And oftentimes you find that the issues that they thought was so devastating could not be repaired, Amen. could have been repaired all along if they just had a good, wholesome yeah. conversation to settle their issues. Don't talk at each other. Talk to each other. Amen. 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 Crucial conversations dictates that you sit down, you understand my emotion, you understand my pain, you understand my intensity, you don't push me off, you understand it, you feel it, 
and then relate to me. So that I can become a better individual at understanding you. So that we can become one. And listen, force the devil out. Good character. And marriage. Amen. 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 So it means to be complete in your arrangement. Titus 2, 7 and 8 says this. Show yourself in all respect to be a model of good. This is from the English Standard Version. Show yourself in all respect to be a model of good works. And in your teaching, show integrity. Yes. Dignity. And sound speech that cannot be condemned, so that an opponent mm -hmm. may be put to shame, okay. having nothing evil yes. to say about you. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good work in doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, and sincerity. I'm reading it over again for a different version. Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing <coughs> to say about you. Mm -hmm. In other words, giving no place to the devil. Right. Because the anointing should be exceedingly powerful in all of our lives. Amen. Amen. First Timothy 4 and 12 says this, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in what? In word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. In 1 Peter 2, 19 to 21, just going to read portions of it. If a man for conscience sake towards God endure grief, suffering, and wrongfully, for what glory is it when ye be buffeted for your faults? You shall take it part patiently. But if when you do well and suffer with it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. God is trying to develop character in all of us when we suffer. Now the Bible says in order to be an anointed one, in order to be an anointed carrier of glory, one's moral character has to be in alignment with the Lord's character. That's why in Leviticus, the 20th chapter, the 7th verse, God said to sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I, the Lord God, am holy. In other words, don't go to the left, to the left, to the left. No, no, no. You're going to the right, to the right, to the right, and get the devil out. Okay. For some of you that keep up with the uh, Pablo songs, okay? Y'all know I'm going to feel right now. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But it's nothing like having a little fun. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So in other words, when we talk about sanctify ourselves, sanctification, God knows, is a bad word in the church nowadays. My Lord. It really is. Amen. So if we are walking in a sanctified character, okay. we're walking in honesty. We're walking in truth. Let me share this story with you. I, I, I counsel two men probably about six years apart. And both of them had the same, same, same habit. They were chronic liars. So whenever I counsel somebody and live, I have my iPad with me. I'm taking good notes. Because the mind can be a little slow. But I'm not that slow. So in conversation with one gentleman, actually both of them, and it's sort of kind of ironic because they both exhibited the same behaviors and the same patterns. So one session, they tell me one thing. So, okay, I'm writing it down. Second session, they tell me the same thing but a different story. Third session, they did the same thing. And at this point, I'm going back through my notes. After every session, I read through my notes. And I'm like, okay, I'm preparing myself for the next session. The fourth session comes. One was recommended by a pastor to me because they were on their board of elders and they were perfecting coordination. So I was talking to him the fourth time. I said, well, look, elder, I need to meet you. I wanted to see what he was going to do. 
I said, I need to meet you at the church, your church, the church where you attend now. I need to meet you there. What have we? No, I want to be that Starbucks. I said, well, this isn't a Starbucks issue. This is a church issue. Mm -hmm. So we're going to meet at the church. Mm -hmm. So it kept saying, well, I'm not going to meet you at the church. I want to meet you because I don't want anybody to know about this. Well, your business, everybody already knows. Yeah. <laughs> so what you got to hide? Right. So anyway, he decided he didn't want to meet at the church. So I said, well, guess what? For reasons that God has revealed to me, I will no longer be your counselor. Mm -hmm. And you will not be working. And my recommendation will be handed to your pastor. He lied because he was saying that he was no longer seeing a married woman in the congregation. He himself was married and he was telling her that he was divorced and clearly he was still living with his wife. Bad character. Yes. A chronic liar. And he's telling me all the while, I'm going to get ready to leave, okay? But you're still living that home. Right. You're still paying the bills. Mm. You're still sleeping in the same bed. And you still have a relation with your wife and the other woman. Where's your character? You are not fit for ministry. You cannot walk down that aisle have people lay hands on you. Because I refuse to release a devil into ministry. Because you're telling me that you're not willing to part with that evil spirit on the inside of you. So this thing is very serious. Life is at risk, at stake. Honesty, compassion, integrity, holiness, love, forgiveness, righteousness, justice, knowing the will of God, being dedicated, having peace, long-suffering, Gentleness, goodness, meekness, faith, joy, prayerfulness, good works, even to see the will of God, will not move without God telling them to move. Mm. Mind to see soul saves, vexed by the things that God is vexed by, and honoring the things that God wishes to, to honor. A soul that is given to fasting and praying, and without question, they're not moving to the left, to the left, to the left, <laughs> but to the right, to the right, to the right. Oh my. Now, I want to ask you a question. Everybody knows me, because I love to ask questions. Do you possess the characteristics of an anointed carrier of the glory? This is time for some introspection. This is time to really think, do some inventory checks, to do some things that we've never done before. Last year, October, I was consecrated to apostleship. Pastor Gary was anointed and, and ordained as a pastor. And we went through an assignment for, I believe it was about two or three months, was it? Where we had to actually deal with our own personal issues. We had to confront them how painful they were. And I made up my mind that none of us were going to walk down that aisle right. and be consecrated That's or ordained. Until I knew that the Spirit of the Lord said that we had dealt with that we didn't need to deal with. Amen. That's right. And that's why the body of Christ is in the dilemma that is in now. Right. Because we have too many people standing in pulpits all across America and around this country that will not deal with their issues. Right. Right. They're going to stand in the ministry in a pulpit, cover it over and act like everything is fine, but deep on the inside, there's an adulterous spirit. There's a spirit of anger. There's a spirit of control. There's a spirit of competition. There's a whole lot of things that we are not God's cesspools. We are not cesspools. The scripture says, the scripture says, know ye not that ye are the temple of the living God. And Pastor Joyce already mentioned how the glory of the Lord came down on the, on the Mosaic Tabernacle. But listen to this. Many centuries later, there was a man by the name of Solomon, king. And when he prayed, God spoke to him in a vision. And not only that, when they went to dedicate the tabernacle, the temple, then the same presence and the same glory of God that fell upon the Mosaic Tabernacle did the self same thing with Solomon's Tabernacle. Why? Because Moses' heart was right and Solomon's heart was right. 
Let's ask this question. When was the last time you walked into a sanctuary and you felt the tangible presence of the Lord? That's a very poignant question. When was the last time you walked into a sanctuary and you felt the tangible presence of the Lord? In 1983, my mom had asked me to go to church with her. I've been running for her, from her church for years. Sanctified, Holy Ghost Church. They go to church at, at, at 7 o'clock in the morning. I don't see my mom until 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. That's how long the church services were. Literally, they had, how many church services they had? Pastor Gary, they had like three, four, all day long. So I'm in the Navy. I come home. I put on my uniform. I go to church with her. Finally consented for an evening service, 7 o'clock. Testimony service, Lord, when will it be over? <laughs> <laughs> Testimony service over, then the choir is sang. Like, okay, we're like two hours in there. Okay, about 9, 9.30, the preacher gets up. I'm sitting there the whole time, and I've been in church all my life. All my life, literally. I'm a church baby. Never been to a sanctified church before in my life. As soon as I walked through the door, I felt a presence and a power that immediately convicted me. My God. I was ready. I'm going to be honest. I wanted to get out the door, get home to my girlfriend, so we could have some fun. <laughs> I'm sitting there the whole time. I'm convicted. I don't know what in the world is going on here. I never felt this presence or this power before. And still with me. I'm praying to God to get me out of here. <laughs> the very presence that I was feeling was God. But I'm praying to that power to get me out of here because I couldn't stay in that power that I was feeling because that power was convicting me of my sin. Why? Because of the character of the people of God in that place. Yes. Yes. I was saying in the projects of East Baltimore, a mother who had absolutely nothing in her home, very few earthly possessions, but one thing I can say, that woman had power with God. Amen. She spent her days and evenings fasting and praying. And she had the character of God that demanded the presence of the Lord. She sat on one side of the living room, I said, the opposite end, I sat on the other end, and she said, baby, I said, she read a scripture, Acts 2.38, and after that, I don't know where the words came from, what must I do to be saved? She said, baby, close your eyes and begin worshiping the Lord. And I did, and that moment, April 8, 1985, around 5 o'clock p.m. in the afternoon, evening, I was saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. I felt the weight of this world lifted off of my soul, and I felt the presence of the glory of the living King coming to my life. Hallelujah, Jesus. Of that woman. Yeah. Listen, in order to understand character, <coughs> we must also understand anointing. Yeah. Amen. Anointing comes from a word Christmas. Yes. Not Christmas, like a Christmas tree. Christmas. <laughs> which means an ungent. I may not be pronouncing that correctly, so please forgive me. It's an ointment of sad, usually liquid or semi-liquid, for the application to wounds or sores. Your anointing by your character, oh, yeah. good character, mm. ought to heal somebody. All right. All right. Amen. We have too many Amen. broken people in church, yes. and we profess to be anointed. Yes. So where's your power to heal? Yes. Where's your power to make whole? Yes. Where's your power to make complete? Yes. We have to question our character and our motives when it comes to service in the Lord. Yeah. Because, listen, no one should come to a church and leave broken, disgusted, depressed, and not healed. Amen. We make a mockery out of God, excuse me, we make a mockery out of God when we say that he heals, and then you leave and go home the same way you came. Jesus. Jesus. 
we should be grieved in our spirits, yes. in our hearts. Yes. Because really, church is not a place for entertaining. Right. The church is a place for worship. And Jesus calls his, calls his house this, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. When are we going to say, let's put aside our program for this morning? Yes. 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 When are we going to cry out, God, you speak in this house? Yes. Glory I don't have to stand and say another word of God until you speak yes. and release us because we can seek in you yes. for the character of God. Yes, Lord. That's when things change. Yes, yes. When are we going to call people back to pray? Come on. Come on. Okay, they don't like praying for 10 minutes. Okay, let them come, pray for 10 minutes, and you cover the rest until they understand that prayer is a thing that we do. It's not something we tolerate. It is what we do because we seek the face of the Lord so that he would heal our land, forgive our sins, and help us to grow and walk in the strength and the power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes. That's where the power comes from. It means being smeared. You're going to become oily. You're going to become sticky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And things are going to stick to you. Because when you're anointed, people will gravitate towards you. And this is where we have to learn not to repel folk, but to embrace folk. I don't care how nasty, dirty, stinky you may be, but yet, if I see your soul in trouble, I'm going to embrace you. And in this season, what God is doing, let me just divert, but let me just take a different path for a moment. Because there are too many people in the body of Christ that are contemplating committing suicide. I'm talking about leaders. I'm talking about pastors. I'm talking about bishops. I'm talking about apostles. I know because I get the phone calls. People that are contemplating ending their lives because they become disillusioned by the things that they're seeing around them in this life. Because they don't feel as though their ministries are growing and prospering. Because they feel as though their voices aren't being heard. Because they feel so many different things that are going on around them and in this world. And listen, it's a delusion by the very kingdom of darkness. Let me give you a newsflash. The kingdom of darkness has stepped up its attack. This thing is far more serious than it has ever been before. As I was praying and fasting this week, coming out to this conference, all I could feel was the inner turmoil and pain. And I felt as though something was going through me exactly on my strength. That let me know that God is about to do something in Oxnard, California, right. and every single ministry represented here. Because you have the time to come out so that you can be about the glory of the Lord, so that you can expose the devil and become a powerhouse and listen, a threat to the very kingdom of darkness. The Bible said, My people perish for lack of knowledge. And see, what glory carriers do is that they carry an intensity yes. of an anointing yes. that tells the devil, mm -hmm. you are not going to survive here. Yes. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. There's only going to be one survivor. There's only going to be one winner. And listen, yes. Jesus is the winner. Yes. I represent yes. him. Therefore, I did not fail because he is on my side. And the character of a true anointed vessel of the Lord demands that God stands behind them. Back them up. Supports them. And push them into greatness. That's what it stands for. See, when the devil fights you, he understands the intensity of the anointing. That God intended for you to walk in. That's right. How many of you have been in glory of the battle? Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Uh, show of hands. How many of you have been in glory and battle? Yes, Lord. <laughs> you think it's just, just to be in glory and battle? No. 
See, what God is doing, the devil intended it for evil. Yes, yes. But God intended it for good. Amen. He's looking to make you stronger than you ever have been before. And listen, the important battle that you're in, I really want you to hear me now. I need for you to embrace it. Not to accept it to stay prolongly, but I need for you to embrace it so that you can learn from it. Because there are lessons that the Lord is looking to teach you yeah. So that when you come out of that battle victoriously, when you come out victoriously, you would have learned something about the devil that you didn't know before that will stand up against his head and this what? You will topple his kingdom every time by the knowledge that you apply. That's why the Bible said, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. They know you're going to become learned. That's right. That's right. And the right. things of God. Right. Why? So that you can defeat him. Listen, he's been studying you ever since you've been born. Before you were born. Before you were born in your mouth's death. He's been studying you. And listen, he knows every flaw that you have. But listen, the blood covers it all. I want to say it again. The blood covers it all. So when you go to bring up your past, <laughs> bring up the future. Yeah. In the land of hell, you in the fire, in the, in the hell, you will burn. You will be cast into the lake of fire, where you will suffer both day and night. And guess what? While you're suffering, I'm going to be around the throne worshiping our God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let him know every single time. Listen, the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. So, in the midst of your battle, in the midst of your pain, in the midst of your struggle, what God really is working in you is his character. He's causing you to understand and know his mind and come to his mind because, listen, if you fully understand what you're going through, what it should really drive you to do is follow your face. To seek the face of God, to pray and intercede without ceasing because he has to know he's trying to diminish you. But God's trying to increase you because the foolish enemy doesn't know that every time he comes up against you, you find yourself right in the right presence of the Lord. And Pastor Joy has already declared, and I concur, that every time you seek the face of the Lord, His glory is being revealed to you. The sufferings of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed to us. Your suffering for glory to show up. To be an anointed carrier of the glory, your suffering so that glory can show up. You're suffering so that glory on the inside of you can manifest strength. So that the glory on the inside of you can grow and mature and become bigger than you are. And when the glory becomes bigger than who you are, you lose a sense of self and a consciousness of God that you never had before. That's what it's all about. It's about understanding and knowing and replicating the mind of Christ. Consider Jesus, listen to this, consider it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. So if he did not make himself of any reputation, and he took on the mind of Christ, and listen to this, the Bible said that right now, I'll be seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. No, it didn't say futuristically. It says right here and the right now. So if the Bible says that you're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, then you're sitting in the throne of the power. Oh, man, thank you, Father. Oh, man. Not tomorrow. Not yesterday. But already. So, transformation of the mind. Talk about idols and images, y'all. So, if he says that right now, 
Oh we're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Then guess what? You have access to all power, all authority, and all of who he is. The thing is, the devil wants more wishes to keep us ignorant so that we don't think that we have access to all power. When you have access to all power, you walk different. That's why you can go into places, not have a dime in your pocket, and come out with the goods that they say that you should have. I know, because I just purchased a home without anything in my pocket. By the glory of the living God, because I have a word from the Lord. We walk by faith and not by sight. So when we walk by faith and not by sight, listen to this, hallelujah, Jesus, the land is yours. Hallelujah, Jesus. So he said, everything he told Moses that ever or Abraham, every place that the soles of your feet touch, they belong to you. Yes, yes. And so somebody needs to do some walking around some neighborhoods. All right. Around some properties, around some loved ones, around some people you know who are demon possessed. You need to start walking around them and claiming them for the kingdom. By the power in the name of Jesus Christ, brother, I claim you for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And listen, they don't even have to be in your physical right. presence for you to walk around them. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Two minutes left, so let's get through this real quick. We'll finish the rest of this afternoon. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 10, 27 says, The yoke shall destroy, shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Yes. Destroy means to reduce the power, this character helps you to reduce the devil to a powerless state. It gives you the ability to reduce them to rubble, to annihilate That's them. Right. Listen, your anointing is caused to be injurious. He wants you to injure the devil. Listen, give him a blow in prayer that he will never recover from. We think that we can't do that. Give him a blow that he will never recover from. I can give you story after story, but time doesn't permit how God has moved in certain ways and devastated the enemy. Glory, Glory. Last year, I had a brother who was trying to uh, misalign my character mm -hmm. and say all sorts of things about the end of report in my employment file. And through the year, a whole year, I sought the face of the Lord. I prayed. I never changed who I was. I went to work, did what I was supposed to do, met with him, laughed, joked, and everything. And at the end of that year, he faced me, said, Listen, I know Lord, I went to church on a Sunday worship. God said, I'm getting ready to move this car from over your head. Tuesday, he came around and knocked on my office door, said, Come talk to me, because I was in a meeting. So this is what he did. He called me around, went around to his office. He said, You know something, William? You, all the this year, you never changed who you were, your personality, your character, all the things the same. I'm removing this from off your record. Because he said, listen to this, I no longer want this cloud over your head. <laughs> Two days ago, God said he's removing the cloud. All right, come on. So Amen. listen to this. Amen. He removed all of that from my profile. Come on, come on. Then two months later, he was called for HR on a Friday. We were in a meeting about 4.30, mm -hmm. and he never returned. They end up terminating him because of his character. Yeah, my so whoever is trying to douse your character, guess what? God's got one up on them. Yeah. Hallelujah, yeah. Jesus. He will remove the devil from your presence. He will remove the enemy from your presence. That's right. And you will find that the blessings of the Lord make a rich and have a no sorrow. When your character lies with the character of God, yes. you will never be defeated. Yes. Amen. That's time. My time is up. I'm over my time. The character of God will never take you to a place where you will not be vindicated. The thing is this. The power of God 
is exhibited through your excellent character. Amen. And this afternoon, we're going to talk about, if the time permits, two individuals in the scripture who had poor character. We're going to talk about poor character and what God calls them. One person God calls them a witch outright. Because of the character. Remember, we're not going to the left, to the left, to the left. We're going to what? To, to the, the right, right, to the right. To Come on, y'all sing it with no, 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 leave me out there by myself. Come no, no. on. I know it's a secular song, okay, but we can benefit from it. To the left, to the left, to the left. We ain't going there. We're going to the right, to the right, to the right. And we're going to kick the devil out. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, he's spending you all the time, but you ain't finished none of this. Well, okay. <laughs> you have not really completed the things that he told you to do. Why? Because you're operating outside of what's already been proposed for you for this day. It don't even make no, make no sense. When that man took his shoes off, I thought about, I don't know what my shoes, I, I hook, I put these little ballerina things with the hook on, cause I'll get bad for this in a minute. Because the very first time I ever stood in the pulpit, God said, take your shoes off. You standing on holy ground. And you know, baby, it's not me, don't tip on take your shoes off. But that's how I realized, this man is a man that God created to be a deliverer. That's the next word for you. Because you're way qualified over the people that you are even under. You are Moses himself in the spirit. You was not finished. And that's why God had you walking with me. Because you weren't finished. You were so full. Because of your touch, people get delivered. And then you have to sit in, 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 in like a place where you got to be governed. The devil is a lie. Ain't no, ain't no blessing in being political and legalistic and having no religiosity spirit. God want to use you when he want to use you. You are anointed, powerful man of God. And honey, if I tell you you're a chief apostle, that's who you are. God, I know, I